If you're like me, then you've probably thought that a pilot just looks out of the window and visually judges when to start descent and landing. But it's actually a lot more complicated than that. On a single engine plane or one that flies at a reasonably low altitude, pilots land visually because they can see the runway and they learn to get a feel for when they should start the descent. On larger commercial aircraft, this isn't possible. They fly so high that their descent needs to start well before they see the airport, and if they waited until they saw it, they wouldn't have enough time to descend safely. The pilot, therefore, has to work out distances and make calculations to know exactly when and where to commence their descent. On the aircraft navigation, display, the pilot has the approach for their target airport set up and it specifies a point with the letters TD. This is the top of the descent, the point where the descent to the runway should commence. This marker can be in two different places. The one further from the airport is for a direct or straight in approach, and the one closest is called an approach and transition. This one is used so that the air traffic controller can stagger the landings of aircraft arriving at roughly the same time. Due to the fact that the top of the descent marker for a direct approach is the first one the aircraft will encounter, the pilot will calculate this one first. First, the pilot needs to know how far they are from the runway. They do this by tuning in to the distance measuring equipment, or DME, that is closest to the airport. Next, they need to calculate the altitude they need to lose if they are flying at an altitude of 33,000 feet and landing at Miami International Airport, which is at sea level, they would need to descend a full 33,000 feet. But if they are flying to El Alto International Airport in Bolivia, which is at an altitude of about 13,000 feet, they would only need to descend about 20,000 feet. They now need to calculate the minimum distance they need in order to descend that amount comfortably. Here the rule is for every nautical mile travelled, the plane descends 300 feet. So if we have to descend 33,000 feet, we'll need 110 nautical miles. Now they have to consider speed. The average approach speed is 200 knots. If they are travelling at 400 knots, they'll need to lose 200 knots during their descent. A good average for most aircraft is a distance of one nautical mile for every 10 knots. So if they have to lose 200 knots, that's 20 nautical miles. Finally, they need to calculate wind. If they have a tailwind, it will be harder to lose altitude. If they have a headwind, it will be easier. Here, the calculation is one nautical mile for every 10 knots of wind. If it's a headwind, they subtract it from the total. If it's a tailwind, they add it. So, to descend 33,000 feet, they need 110 Nm. To lose 200 knots, they need 20 Nm. And 20 knots of tailwind is 2 Nm. This makes a total of 132 Nm. So, the pilot needs to start their descent 132 nautical miles from the airport. Although a 3 degree descent is the ideal descent angle for both fuel economy and passenger comfort, most pilots will not follow it exactly. This is because at an angle of 3 degrees, it is very hard to slow the plane down without using the air brakes and then having to up the power again, wasting fuel to regain speed and the 3 degree glide slope. Most pilots will descend on idle power and actually start their descent a little steeper losing altitude and gaining a bit of speed, then flatten out to lose that speed and rejoin the 3 degree glide slope for their final approach. Did you enjoy this video? Please let us know in the comments below and please like and subscribe for more. Until next time.